everyone. Welcome to Tech24. I'm Rebecca Bowering. It's a pleasure to be with you. Coming up in the programme, fewer of us are picking BlackBerry. Its maker, Research in Motion, posts dismal second quarter figures with profits halved. So can the Canadian firm innovate its way back to glory? Or is BlackBerry just ripe for a buyout? And in Test 24, we'll be sampling the fruits of RIM's labour. Eric Olander has been to the Paris launch of the largest rollout in BlackBerry history. He'll tell us if the new bold torch and curve models are a gamble that pay off. A BlackBerry looks like a less fruity proposition after its maker, the Canadian firm RIM, posted a stunning slide in profits, down 47% last quarter compared with the one previously. The firm shipped a lower than forecast 10.6 million smartphones. There was also poor demand for its tablet computer. Sales of the Playbook launched in April slumped from 500,000 to 200,000. Well, our tech expert Eric Orlando is here to unpick those figures a bit for us. Eric, what exactly exactly has been eating away at the profits of RIM. This, this is a company that's just not in sync with what the market wants right now, and it's very clear in the numbers. I mean, think back, 2009, 50% of the U.S. cell phone market, smartphone market, was controlled by BlackBerry. Now they're down to 13%. They're not making products that are resonating, and that's the problem. One of the other challenges that BlackBerry faces is they're trying to serve the entire market, the high-end market where iPhones are very competitive, the middle-range market where Android phones are, and that bottom where Nokia has been very, very successful. It's very difficult for one company to do all three well. That's the challenge facing BlackBerry right now. They always had a very strong support base amongst executives, amongst corporate clients. Is that no longer the case? It is still very much the case because they like that encrypted security that BlackBerry brings. They also like the texting. These keyboards that BlackBerry has, that's what a lot of these executives like. The ability just to tap an email, tap a text message. Ironically, it's also what kids like as well. So that's one of the strengths that BlackBerry has is that keyboard. But the problem is, is that the cell phone market has moved far beyond just a keyboard and texting emails and messages to apps. And apps are where BlackBerry is very, very weak. Yes, because it only has about 10% of what's on offer with Android and uh, with the iPhone. That's right. Android and iPhone app marketplaces are closing in on half a million apps. BlackBerry's down in the tens of thousands, and that's a major, major weakness for the company. And Playbook hasn't taken off why either. Why is that? In part because Playbook is not a complete device. You need to tether it to your BlackBerry in order to get the same functionality for the same price that you need an iPad for. And so once again, we're running up to this problem with tablets that people are launching these tablets that don't measure up to the iPad in terms of usability but are the same price and people just aren't buying it. Could RIM go the same way as Palm? Is it ripe for a buyout? At this point, one has to think that RIM is going to be hard pressed to stay alone. Their stock price is very low. It does make them a very attractive takeover target. But one thing they can do, uh, perhaps, is tap into the power of the developing market. They've been lowering the, the cost of Blackberries, for instance, in Indonesia. And that's this, this the curve right here, this small little one. One euro, and that's doing very, very well in Indonesia, in Nigeria, and some of the developing markets. The problem they're going to face here is that as as they expand into those developing markets, those emerging markets, they're going to run head on into Nokia, who's been extremely successful there. So RIM is predicting that in the third quarter its revenues will pick up again thanks to this new line of BlackBerry 7 smartphones. There are four new models. Uh, wait for Test 24 next when we'll discuss whether or not that can turn RIM's fortunes around. They're called Bold, Torch and Curve. They sound like names of X-Men, Eric. Can they bring superpowers to RIM or This not? is the Bold 9900. This is new on the French market, rolling out across Europe now and the rest of the world. It's been in the United States for a while. This was launched last week. I went to their event here in Paris. And you know when you go to these events, gadget geeks like me love seeing what's new. And there's just not a sense of excitement when you go to these events at a BlackBerry. It feels nice. You know, it's the the nice girl. You want, you know, you want her to be your friend. She's very, very nice to talk to, but she's not sexy. And this handset is a bit stodgy, isn't it? it? Well, it's, it's a great phone in the sense that it's got this wonderful keyboard. It's 200 euros with a subscription. It's got a touch key, uh, touch screen here that you can use. That's very, very nice. But at the end of the day, nothing wows you about it. When I asked the BlackBerry rep, what would make somebody buy a BlackBerry over an Android phone? He said, well, it was the BlackBerry Messenger. Now that at the end of the day is not going to be enough because it comes down to apps, hardware, 
and the operating system. These are all using the BlackBerry 7 operating system, which yeah, is the new operating us? system, and it gives you a lot more flexibility, a lot more integration with apps, but at the end of the day, it's still not an app-based device like you're seeing on Android and iPhone. But we can see that BlackBerry is trying to appeal to all parts of the market, all demographics. They are, and here you have the middle range of the market, and this is the one that they are going after the Android segment. This is 90 euros with a subscription. This is that mid-range. This is an extremely competitive range. This, of course, does not have that key keyboard that is so iconic on the other Blackberries, and that's going to be a problem because again with only 35,000 apps you really having a touch base screen like this it's not going to cut it where they're going to possibly do extremely well is the low end of the market and this low end of the market is the curve this is a one euro with an abundant mode with a subscription that's the same device that you saw in the UK in the riots that the kids were having it's also mm. very popular with teens the problem with this device is that these are not high margin customers. So they don't buy a lot. They use the BlackBerry Messenger a lot. They're not downloading a lot of apps. This is a great device for the emerging markets in the developing world. It's a starter device into the BlackBerry family. But more likely what's going to happen is people start on this and they leave BlackBerry. Not a lot of loyalty necessary not there. Necessary. Thank you very much for that, Eric Orlando. Thank you to you for watching this edition of Tech24. A reminder, as ever, to get more information on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash tech24, and to follow us both on Twitter. Now, we're going to end the show on a hackathon. What's that? Well, it's a contest that brings together software developers for a kind of collaborative session of programming, and it's a great way for social networks to develop original applications on the cheap. Now, there was an international event last weekend organized by Foursquare, that's the geolocation service, and our team went to check out the Paris event. No, we're not on the set of a Bond movie. In fact, we're in the neoclassical Palais Brognard in Paris, converted for now from Greek temple to geek temple. For the first time in Europe, geolocation service Foursquare has launched one of its app coding competitions, known as a hackathon. Hackathon is an event where coders get together and create an application from an idea. It's about getting people together to create apps to use with Foursquare. The first challenge for would-be app creators is to do a sales pitch for their product. They have to convince the assembled hackers, coders and designers to join their team. The app uh, we want to do today is basically something for spontaneous events. Well, how it works is figures out who's here, then it goes on Twitter, Facebook, pulls your interest, that's our minds a little bit, and comes up with something that you can all do together. And they're off. The 15 teams have got 36 hours to go from concept to finished product. Coming from all over Europe, there are around 100 participants involved. The laptops stay on all night, although the coders themselves grab a bit of a power nap. Time's up, and the teams have done all they can. It's down to the jury to decide. And the number one is get together. Rand Hindi's team has won first prize. There's no time lost by the organisers. The app's already available online. And if you want to take part in a hackathon, then check out this video. You might need to get in training. It's a little bit harder than it looks. Thanks for watching. See you again next week on Tech24.